So we're passing data into templates. And uh, there's a couple of examples here in the code base just so you can kind of see them. It sends 05 data. And if you're wanting access to this code base, you can find the entire course here and uh, right there, right there. So go check it out. Um, but here, uh, here's the first example. And we'll just take a look at them. So just passing in that current piece of data. And then the next one, we're passing in a string again, uh, but we're doing it, assigning it to a variable. So you can assign to a variable. There's the current piece of data, and I'm assigning it to this variable, and then I'm using that variable here. So within your template, you could create a variable, and you could assign the value of the data to that variable. Um, and so that's passing in a single piece of data. We could also pass in aggregate composite data structures. And so here we're passing in a slice of string. Okay, so a slice of string, everybody see that? And, and then we range, we could range over that. And it'll print out each individual one. So that'd be like list items. Right, so it'd print out each of these right there by ranging and ending. And then here we could also assign those to variables so we could range over and get the index and the element at that position if we wanted. And then here we're ranging over a map. And so this is the entire map. We're ranging over that. But as you access each piece of data, the dot becomes the, you know, in the, the individual entry in the map, right? So the dot's always the current piece of data. So that's range dot, and then give me the dot. So you just have to remember the dot is my current piece of data and my data structure that I pass to the template. And, uh, and that was uh, doing a map. And then we could do a struct. So here I'm ranging, I created a struct name and motto. And then I created, you know, I created a value of type sage. And I passed in a value of type sage, a value of that struct. And then I could access the fields. They have to be capitalized though. Capital first letter means it's available outside of the package. You could you could see it outside of the package, right? So it's kind of like private public in Java, but we don't say private public in Go. We say exported, not exported, available, not available, visible, not visible, right? And then here we have, we could also assign those to variables like that if we wanted. And then here we have a slice of struct so I have many different sages, and I'd create a slice of sage. So I could range over my slice of sage, and for each sage, I'll print out the name and the motto, right? Because that's a slice I'm ranging over, but each time I range over it, the current piece of data in each entry in the slice is a sage, which is a struct which has two fields, which I can access. That's kind of cool, right? So structs are really useful for passing data in because then it becomes, uh, it becomes readable in your code. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm accessing the name, I'm accessing the motto, like my HTML templates making sense. Like up here on the slice, I'm like, I have no idea what's being printed out when I look at that HTML template. But down here, right, I do. What's up, Sid? Oh, cool, man. Sorry. And then here, just to show you a little bit more complicated data structure being passed in, I have three different kinds of structs. And I create values for each of those structs, sages, cars, and items. Items is going to hold a slice of sage and a slice of cars, 
right? So I'm creating sages and I'm creating cars. So I create sages, I create cars, and then I create a slice of sages and I create a slice of cars. And then I have this data structure items, which has, you know, all my sages and all my cars as a struct. And so I create that and then I pass in that data, right? And in my template here, the first thing is going to be a struct. And then inside the struct, each of these are going to be slices so I could range over them. And as I range over each of those, I'm going to have individual pieces of data which are structs. And so the way you'd access that is like, let me range over the wisdom slice. Let me range over the transport slice. And each one is going to give me a sage whose name and motto I could get. So it's like, becomes pretty readable. You, but you have to like plan it out a little bit. What's your data structure that you're passing in? So in the next video, we'll take a look at the documentation and just kind of connect the documentation to the data or to the examples that we just saw here. Anybody have any thoughts or questions about that? I see wheels turning in Jeff's eyes. No? Yeah, you good? Yeah. All right, we'll look at the, the documentation in the next video.